What's up, everybody? Brothers, sisters, psychonauts, and seekers of truth, it is Ananka, and welcome to my bazaar. Today, I have a DMT chirp report for you. The title of this chirp report is The Trip Fantastic, and was submitted to Erowid in 2007 by the user Z. With all that being said, let our story begin. The following is a personal account of my ultimate trip in deep psychedelic inner space. Over the past 13 years or so, I've been always looking to reach the next level. I'm talking about drugs, of course. I've tried almost every mind-altering substance known to man, but nothing came close to the insane experience I had on DMT a couple hours ago. I tried DMT for the first time in 2003 in Isla Vista, California, a small beach city close to Santa Barbara. It was in the wee hours of the morning, after a night of heavy drinking and racking lines of coke. I was chilling with my boys at this dude's crib, blazing chronic and pounding forties, when the random guy on the couch woke up from his faded stupor and packed me a bowl of some herb and this yellowish powder, DMT. He said it's the craziest shit he's ever had. In my circles, I'm not really known as the guy who would back down and be a pussy and say no. So I said, what the fuck, let's do it. I lit the shit, inhaled it, and then it hit me. I was immediately transported into another fucking dimension. It was like the space trip in 2001 A Space Odyssey. I was being launched to space and traveling through this vortex black hole tube thing at an extreme velocity. I was seeing lasers, graphs, geometric shapes, and other images. I felt a foreign being take a hold of me. It was alien-like, almost evil. It started to communicate with me. It told me that they put that bark on Earth for mankind to find it, and smoke it to communicate with them. It was our way to find out the secret, the meaning of life. That being made me realize that we are just puppets in a grand play. They are light years ahead of us and much more intelligent. The aliens said that Earth was their planet and they allowed us to live there. That shit just blew my mind. I could not believe what I was experiencing. I've tripped out on a bunch of shit, like mad liquid acid, mushrooms, special K, mescaline, ecstasy, meth, and other crazy Euro shit during my extended stay in Budapest, Hungary. For example, the hockey puck. It looks like a round, thin, black screen, and you put on your tongue like a tab. It's made of mushroom oil extract and mescaline. I have to say, it's one of the craziest and most demented things I've done. It was the most powerful thing I've done at that point, and even that did not phase my latest DMT trip. I used to go to raves every weekend for a number of years, doing shit. I was always that kid who took too much. I've been to the far reaches of the galaxy, but this shit put me through to the other side. The second time I smoked DMT was yesterday at my pad in Hollywood. My buddy and I made our own shit this time. I ordered that shit online from one of those ethnobotanical websites. Its scientific name is Mimosa hostilis. It's root bark that comes from South America. We did our research on all the texts we could find at the time, and we decided on the lazy man's one. It was fairly easy to make, but a tad bit tedious. I knew what I was in for, so I remained patient and optimistic. Although at one point I had some serious doubts about our skills in the preparation of psychoactive substances, not to mention following directions. My buddy, we'll call him P, 
paranoid alien, or PA for simplicity's sake. He's a seasoned veteran tripper, but he's never tried DMT before. He was eagerly waiting to try our creation. A couple days after extraction, I tried smoking it in a ghetto homemade crack pipe made from a broken glass bowl and some foil. I didn't feel shit. It evaporated really quickly. Afterwards, I tried to freebase it off of foil. That didn't work as well. I had the same problem. It evaporated too fast. I started to worry that we fucked up. So I thought, if I snort it, there's no way it can evaporate and I'm bound to feel something. I made myself a fat strap and racked it to the head. The shit burned so bad. It felt like somebody poured habanero hot sauce up my nostrils. After about ten minutes, I started to feel it creeping on. It wasn't strong by any means, but rather gentle and tamed. I had really minor trails and visuals, and a slight body high. It was kind of euphoric like coke, but with weak visuals. It was nothing too crazy, but at least I knew it worked. I went to bed thinking, maybe I should smoke it out of a bong with some weed like the first time I tried it. The next evening, I grabbed my faded, two-foot, three-changer, double-bub, color-changing glass bong. Now this piece is the mother of all bongs. It has three chambers and an ice catcher, so the smoke filters through two sets of water and some ice cubes, so I get the smoothest hit possible. DMT can be harsh at times. I turned down the lights, lit some candles, and popped in this moonshine, trippy visuals DVD to watch it on my 52-inch, sharp Aquos LCD with a Pioneer 4 tower speaker, 5.1 surround sound system. I put a layer of bud on top of the screen in the bowl, then took the corner of a business card and dipped it in a pile of DMT crystals. I sprinkled it on top, and then covered it with some more bud, to not light the crystals directly. Shit hit me as soon as I cleared the bong. The initial rush was insane. The walls were not only breathing like on acid or mushrooms, but everything in the room was so colorful and vivid that it seemed like I was in a cartoon. All the objects in the room were outlined in dramatic colors. I have two pictures of New York above my TV, which came alive and crawled up my ceiling. The candles made it look like the city was on fire. The popcorn ceiling was like a huge microchip, outlined like a colorful graph. I felt like I was in the Matrix. Then I closed my eyes to see what it would look like on the inside. I reacted to the brightness of the TV and the candles as well as the different colors they created. I didn't see any aliens this time, but I felt that alien presence, and it was pretty crazy to say the least. It was jaw-dropping incredible. I was just sitting there in awe, gawking at every trippy object in the room. A few minutes later, I tried the same method, but with a regular weed pipe. I felt it a little bit, but it was really ineffective compared to hitting the ball. That same evening, P.A. tried to smoke using the same method, out of his small weed pipe he had at home. It didn't really work for him, and he gave up after two attempts and went to bed. I hit the sack as well and we both agreed that we'll give this a proper go tomorrow. The next evening took place the most insane trip I've ever had in my life. Let's keep in mind, folks, that I am a seasoned tripper, and I always like to push the envelope to see how far I can go. I gave P.A. a little bit less than what I had the night before. We popped in 2001 A Space Odyssey, and PC cranked up some Floyd on his iPod. 
It was the crazy scene where Dave goes into this colorful hyperspace bliss hovering over the planets. We also lit candles, turned on some black lights, and placed some trippy, flashing blue lights in the room. I also happened to have this colorful disco light bulb called the Cyclotron that reflects colorful images around the room. P.A. took a fat rip, closed his eyes, laid back, and was speechless for the next few minutes. I felt like I had to join him on his magical journey, so I packed myself a bowl too. Like an idiot, I tripled the dosage that I had the night before and mixed it with this danky kush I got earlier. I never imagined I could ever experience that psychonautic level. It just hit me like a ton of bricks. It took control almost immediately. I sensed the higher power of greater beings or aliens. Through an advanced telepathic communication with them, I perceived that I was going to be shown something and taken for a wild ride. There was no fighting this thing. There was no way to break free. Just like Johnny Depp said in Fear and Loathing, I told myself on my previous trips, go with it, don't fight it, it will only get worse if you fight it. I told myself the same thing now, but there was only one problem. I couldn't fight it or go with it. I was in the void. The room exploded with color. I was blasted to another dimension, again. Only this time I was convinced it was a one-way trip. I catapulted through space with great speed, traveling over scary alien worlds, knowing that there's no turning back. With every passing second, I felt like I was going deeper in this fantastic world. My body was nowhere at this point. I lost complete feel for my body. Like a K-hole, but a hundred times worse than any I've been in. It was a total out-of-body, more like out-of-mind experience. As I was going deeper, I tried to fight it, to regain some kind of control. It was useless. The room was just incredible. Sensory fucking overload on all levels. My neurotransmitters were burning, pulsating, and screaming. The cyclotron made it seem like I was in a spaceship with spinning lights. Then the candles had this burning effect on my spaceship. I was on fire, and I was going to crash. There was way too much stimuli to digest. Then it felt like something cracked in my head, like I burst a blood vessel or something. I could not handle the madness that surrounded me, and I reached the breaking point. I somehow had this feeling that if I give up now and crash, then my body will die in the real world. It was no use. It had a hold on me like nothing I've experienced, and we were going down. My life flashed before me during this part of the trip, and I thought I was going to die. It happened so fast that I thought to myself, Okay, Z. This time, you've really done it. You've been pushing your luck for so many years, thinking you can take anything without consequence. And now this shit is going to do you in. It was only that, but it felt like I was being punished for undermining this powerful drug. It was like, fuck you, bitch. You can't hang with this shit. Who do you think you are? You think you're hot shit? We'll try this on for size, motherfucker. Blam in your face. I crash landed, and that's when shit went white. I'm on the other side now. PA said that my body was convulsing, and my heart felt like it was going to explode. Then I laid still. At this point, I'm completely retarded. I cannot function for shit. I start floating up and see myself from above looking down on my body and P.A. trying to revive me. My girlfriend, Sugarbutt, runs in the room screaming. 
They are both above me now, stroking my face and telling me that everything's going to be okay and that they will get me some help. Then everything started moving fast again, fast forwarding on the events after my death. The ambulance came out and took me to the hospital. I was in a laboratory, lying on a table, waiting to be sliced open and experimented on. P.A. and I were all over the news. He made it out safely, but I took too much and fried my brain. Our story became a really hot affair. We were made examples of for kids not to do drugs, or this is what will happen. It felt like the damn Truman Show, an evil game show. My whole life was being filmed for the rest of the world's entertainment. From me as a small fetus, to my last hit of lethal DMT weed mix. It was pure torture, because there was no way out. I felt like I was stuck in an eternal loop in my delusional, nihilistic mind. I was an observer wishing I can regain control of my body. I was now solidly plugged into this tremendous channel of never-ending information. My family and friends were all crying at first, but later laughing, saying, you got what you wanted. I saw my own funeral go down. As I was lowered in the grave, I looked upward at everybody staring down at me. It felt like I was swirling down the drain. At this point in the abyss, I remembered reading about how the human brain releases DMT before you die. I thought that this had to be it. This has to be the final moment of my puny, meaningless existence. I felt pathetic. I couldn't believe that this is how I'm going out. Fuck that shit. Everything turned black. I believe that this is where I flatlined. I hear P.A.'s voice very faintly. I start seeing some traces of color and hear some ambient noise. Is this hope? Did I find a way out? I was thinking, if there is hope for survival, I would be a comatose vegetable in a nut house somewhere. There was no way I would come back to normal. I had to try, though. I tried really hard to open my eyes, but I couldn't. The colors started getting brighter and more intense, and the noise more apparent. I felt like I was rising upward to go back to where I came from. I see shapes starting to form around me. All of a sudden, I was back in the spaceship, traveling through an insane colorful vortex. I was submersed in a synesthetic sea of visuals, moving up the spiral at high speeds. Alien beings were attacking my spaceship and trying to prevent my escape. They were trying to get me. To my surprise, PA is in the spaceship with me, shooting aliens and clearing the way for us. Fuck yeah. Like all great intergalactic tag teams, Captain James T. Kirk and Mr. Spock, Han Solo and Chewbacca, Space Ghost and Zorak, we were battling the forces of evil on the new frontier, not to conquer, but for self-preservation. I saw a school of yellowtails swimming around, and for some reason I had to go fish, so I threw my line and started to fish for Yellowtail during my high-speed chase through the alien-infested vortex that was going to bring me salvation. Hmm, real smart. The light. I saw the light at the end of the tunnel. It started getting brighter as we blasted up. I knew that this has to be the way back to the other side. It just dawned on me that I actually broke on through to the other side, like Jim fucking Morrison, and now I'm heading back to my world. We got out just in time. I felt like another second in that psychedelic hell, and I would have been toast. 
I was able to see clearly now and realized what just happened. P.A. was about to call the cops because he thought I might not survive this. My visuals were still off the charts insane, but I had a sense that I am back now, and all I have to do is sit through this and I'll be fine. I reassured P.A. that I'm cool now, and he doesn't have to call an ambulance. I was still tripping hardcore at this point. It felt like the teeth grinding, dragon breathing down my neck, a frenzied peak of an intense liquid acid trip. It was starting to leave me now. Woo-hoo, demon be gone. The sheer joy of being alive was overwhelming. For the next half an hour, I could not stop talking about my experience. I could not believe how far I went. That trip was the craziest shit I've ever heard of or experienced personally. I am also convinced that at one point, I died and came back. I will never go beyond that point. Too bad I don't have a scale so I can measure the amount I took. But any more and I would have been permafried. Or wait, am I? Just kidding. This was an earth-shattering, psychedelic experience that made me realize how important my sanity is. I would rather die than experience life looking through a distorted window of reality where I cannot engage my environment. I think I got an insight to what a catatonic patient on a permanent bad trip must feel. All right, everyone, that is the end of our story. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Share with us your DMT experiences down in the comments below. Check out the other videos and playlists on my channel. And I will see you in the next one, fam. Deuces.